Hi, I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb, and we're going to be discussing the use of platelet-rich plasma for dark circles mm -hmm. under the eyes. Uh, so Don's going to be talking about a study that tried to use PRP to help patients with this very common condition. Um, they're also seeing if it helped with crow's feet. And can you tell us a bit more about this study? Sure. So this was, I guess, technically, medically, a case series. Okay. So because there were there, it wasn't necessarily planned or. Um, I you see. Know, they're just like, doing it to their patients. Yeah, and, the and then they're they're just reporting on the results. Right. There's certainly no control group. No. So there were only 10 patients involved in this case series, and there's a mean age of around 41, which I guess this is like the average age that people start considering maybe getting treatment right. or um, um, dark circles or, or crow's feet or right. any anything associated just with getting a little older. Right. Like, um, so anyway, so the patients were treated with um, 1.5 mil of PRP per eye, right. I believe. Yeah, that's correct. They used a uh, Tubex tube, mm -hmm. which is out of Korea. It's not FDA approved. No. So again, this is not something in the United States you want to see. If anyone's mm -hmm. using Tubex, it's not a good sign. Yeah. It's probably illegal. Uh, but this study was not done in the US. Mm -hmm. It was done in Iran. Um, and the, the Tubex tube does use a double centrifugation process, which is promising. Uh, most of the good PRP kits yeah. will. And yes, you're correct. They, they took a 10 milliliter blood draw and ended up with 1.5 milliliters of PRP per eye. So mm -hmm. actually, I believe it was 10 milliliters going down to three yeah. that they split in half mm -hmm. and then uh, activated. And can you yes, talk a bit so, about that? Yeah, so they actually activated this with calcium chloride, a 10% mm -hmm. solution. And so um, the reasoning behind this was, so right before injection, the reasoning behind this was to um, like sort of get, get uh, the platelets to start degranulating, right. secreting these growth factors right. that they so want. And also, I guess maybe, I mean, this is just speculation, but so they injected it into the tear trough area, mm -hmm. which is kind of right there, right yeah. right by the tear ducts, and uh -huh. also where the crow's feet right. are. Um, and so I guess maybe because there's a lot of uh, like wetness or moisture yeah. circulating around, maybe they thought it might get flushed out too quickly. Right. So they wanted to make sure that there were growth factors that would be present and they wouldn't have to wait on that uh, because within one hour span of time yeah. to like the platelets have secreted 95% of the growth factors. When they've been activated. When they, after, after, after activation. So, right. So the idea is instead of doing an unactivated PRP injection, mm -hmm. worrying that maybe it'll dissipate too quickly exactly. to get these therapeutic benefits, they activate it, inject the PRP before um, it's formed like the fibrin gel mm -hmm. uh, that, that PRP will turn into eventually after yeah. activating. So it says they immediately did this mm -hmm. injection with the hope that the rapid degranulation will occur on site, localized, and, and there'll be a better therapeutic outcome. Yeah, because I think within, it takes 10 minutes for it to form that gel right. that, that then you would put on something like say a bone graft, but right. probably not injecting it straight into right. the, this, this particularly sensitive skin right. around the eye. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so the authors were looking at um, a whole slew of things. So they were looking at melanin content, color homogeneity of the treated site, right. and also um, basically just the hydration of the skin right. like around there, and also uh, the wrinkle volume mm -hmm. and uh, just how visible that was. Right. So they did a follow-up after um, three months, mm -hmm. and then uh, they actually didn't see any statistically significant difference in all of the factors except for the color homogeneity. Right. And so uh, the authors reported definitely seeing statistical significance of that. Right. So, so yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing three month follow up mm -hmm. after one, you know, one of these PRP treatments. And what they're doing is they're looking at before and after photos. Um, so it's like somewhat blinded in that sense. Yeah. Um, I think they had one researcher look at, at one set of photos and, and then. Or, or it, it was not the researcher no, who did no, the No, 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 it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. exactly. So the, the researcher that compared before and after didn't, wait, wait, no, but everyone got an injection. Every patient got an injection. Yeah. So, so what they must have been doing is just mm -hmm. looking at the photographs of before and after mm -hmm. and, and evaluating yeah. each photograph based on these different parameters yeah. so and then just comparing those results. Oh, yeah, that, I guess that makes sense. Two just independent people. Like, it, they don't really go into... I guess. Like. Yeah, they don't go too much. That's yeah. why we're trying to deduce what <laughs> yeah. they did exactly. But at the end of the day, statistically significant improvement mm -hmm. in the, the infraorbital dark circles. Yes. So the, the pigmentation was better, you know, after yeah. these PRP yeah. treatments. And so, um, 
I mean, the authors do mention, they're, they're like, this is just a case series, which yeah. I, I like the fact that they said that. This is just a case series. Yeah. This is just saying it worked for this. Right. Then they said that they wanted to do a follow-up maybe that included other things like a control group, a bigger sample yeah. size, like, like better follow-up, you know, mm -hmm. like better intervals of follow-up, multiple injections. Absolutely. Yeah, there's um, a lot there are lots of different done. variables. But anyway, they were just getting the information out there and nobody had adverse effects I too. I think that's it. Which that's also very important when you're going to do anything on a bigger scale. Right, exactly. Yeah. If they can make sure it's safe, mm -hmm. that's often the first step in these oh, sort yeah. of pilot studies. Yeah, usually it's series. just like, like, is this safe to right. use at all? Right. So, mm -hmm. so we know it's safe and it looks like it works uh, in this instance, so mm -hmm. hopefully there'll be some better research with the control group, and better placebo control, uh, so we could get some uh, better clinical data to work yeah. with. Yeah, especially like versus, you know, Botox injection or chemical peel or all right, kinds right. of other, other things. The other things they do, bleaching, yeah. chemical yeah. peel, lasers, they could do a good mm -hmm. compar comparative study. Exactly. Uh, so patients know what their best option is. Mm -hmm. All right, Don, well, thank you. We thank have you. one more video coming up today on PRP, so we will be right back in just a few minutes.